yeah, I don't really like theater. I've never acted before and I don't really want to put on a play. These were the words expressed to me by a young man from Detroit who was incarcerated in a juvenile detention in Clinton, Michigan. This was the general sentiment among the group of 10 young men I was working with to put on a play at that facility. Now, despite some initial apprehension about putting on the play, the young man came around to the idea and they had a spectacular performance. But with the play aside, I had the privilege and honor of getting to know these young men on a more personal level over the course of our eight week workshop together. Many of them shared very personal details about their home lives with me. Stories about their unsafe and crime ridden neighborhoods, the challenges and difficulties of dealing with their broken families, their underfunded, under resourced, and overcrowded classrooms where their teachers are unable to give them the personal attention that they deserve. Now, all of these issues and many, many more are what led to these young men committing the crimes that landed them at this facility. But to be honest, none of their stories really surprised me. But what I'm ashamed to admit did surprise me is that despite being incarcerated, these young men planned on attending college and becoming working professionals. Now, I'm not the first person to find this discrepancy between current level of achievement and future aspiration. There have been US representative samples conducted of eighth grade students from low income communities across the US. And what they found is that students believe they are going to attend college despite how they're actually performing in the classroom. And what this says to me is that we are failing to teach our students how to learn. We're failing to give them access to the opportunities and resources that will help them develop the skills to perform well in school and achieve highly academically. And this is something that has haunted my mind ever since. Mary mentioned this to me a few years ago and we thought, well, what could we possibly do as undergraduate students, full-time undergraduate students, what could we do to influence this discrepancy between aspiration and achievement? Well, something that has greatly influenced both of our lives is the performing arts. And as you can see, the performing arts has had a profound personal impact on our lives. But we also found that there's a ton of research to support that arts engagement positively impacts academic performance. Research has shown, shown that students who engage in the arts have better time management skills, better sense of discipline, they engage in more complex thinking and speaking. Students who engage in the arts, regardless of socioeconomic status, volunteer more and have higher standardized test scores. So here we were. We had this social issue that was important to us. We knew we wanted to influence it somehow using the performing arts. We identified Detroit as a community in, needs of, in need of art, artistic performance programming. So we thought, okay, let's go into Detroit Public Schools and do some arts programming. Oh, that's so easy, it'll take like a day. <laughs> <laughs> but before we went ahead, and jumped into Detroit Public Schools, I was reminded of the words a Detroit organizer once expressed to me. She said, Mary, before you do any sort of social programming, there has to be a need in the community for it. But more importantly than there being a need, there has to be a want. So we reached out to Detroit Public School educators and told them about our idea of bringing in arts programming. And we had an overwhelming, overwhelmingly positive response that yes, this is something that we would want. And with that, Acting Out formed as a response to this lack of funding, belief in its benefits, and most importantly, encouragement from the community. So before we could actually go on and perform the show, we had to write the show, cast the show, rehearse the show, build the sets, build the puppets, and pretty much do everything besides deciding on doing it. And the first thing we needed was an idea. What would we be presenting to these kids? What overall themes or topics would we present to these young kids? So our minds immediately went to what we knew. So as theater students here at the university, what is something that we would know more about than the average person? Um, foreign language? No. Science? I've never taken a science class yeah, here. Neither, but <laughs> how about math? No. Well, how about theater? Ah, 
brilliant. <laughs> so with that, our minds immediately went to famous authors and playwrights who have contributed to our own pathways as artists, and what better playwright to discuss and present than the greatest of them all, William Shakespeare. That's a wonderful idea. This is Stewie. Hi, guys. We've all been involved in some sort of Shakespearean production or scene throughout our lives, so if we were to be expert on anything enough to teach young children, what better than some of the greatest works of William Shakespeare? <laughs> I just love Romeo and Juliet and Midsummer Night's Dream. Yeah, and As You Like It and Much Ado About Nothing. What are some of your favorite Shakespearean scenes, Stewie? I just love in Romeo and Juliet, where they're professing their love to each other on a balcony. Oh, oh, and in Midsummer, when the bottom turns from a human to a donkey. <laughs> and by cutting the text down into its simplest form and adding moments of what we call puppet interjection. Wait, wait, wait. What's puppet interjection? Well, Stewie, that's when a character has a question on the meaning or intent behind a piece of text and another character clarifies. Oh. We found that we... <laughs> we found that we had formed a healthy and respectful representation of Shakespeare and a representation that was able to grasp a child's coherence, but more importantly, educational enjoyment. And not to mention, Shakespeare is in everything. That's right, Stewie. Shakespeare is in most every public school's English core curriculum nowadays. Well, and what about in pop culture? Like in my favorite television show, Sesame Street, when the, they do the Monster Peace Theater, or they even act out scenes from Hamlet. Yeah, and music, books, literature, movies, and more. Now, we knew that we were taking this seemingly difficult academic and theatrical writer, but by using the arts, we took this complicated dialogue and made it simple, fun, and relatable. Yeah, I love listening to Shakespeare, but sometimes it can be boring. Well, we can think so too, Stewie. And so does our favorite social Brazilian theorist, educator, and philosopher, Paulo Freire. Paulo for what? Paulo Freire. He's best known for his book, Pedagogy of the Oppressed, in which he talks about the very important concept of the banking style of education. This is the idea that teachers stand at the front of a classroom and deposit information into the minds of young people while they passively absorb that information, memorize it, and regurgitate it at a later stage. Now, Paolo, Alex, and myself strongly disagree with this kind of educating, and we wanted to do everything we could to avoid having that in our play performance. So we made sure to include very engaging aspects of the performance for the students. The students are able to interject, ask questions, and they participate in hands-on theatrical exercises with the performers. Now that's an education. Mm -hmm. Bye, guys. Bye, Stewie. And most of all, we believe in the importance of collaboration, in which students can create their own original theatrical pieces. Education can be so liberating when everyone claims knowledge in which we all labor. The students become the experts and we challenge them to engage themselves in original creative expression. And this results in improved self-efficacy and a stronger sense of self-empowerment. Mm -hmm. Now, Alex and I are very proud of the arts programming that we've created, but we also recognize we are but a small drop in the pond of individuals and organizations that have been doing this work in Detroit for decades. Organizations like Matrix Theater Company, Living Arts, Inside Out Literary Arts, The Car Center, and Detroit Connections, and many, many more. And we hope that this gives you some insight that the power of free and creative expression has on not only every generation, but specifically the youth and young communities, both locally and globally. And we encourage you to look more into organizations like these and many others that are doing this work in Detroit and beyond. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>